Welcome to Good Screenwriting. I'm Trevor Meyer, and today we're going to talk about The Room. Now, if you haven't heard of this movie, you're missing out, all right? Uh, missing out, not in the conventional sense of you're missing something really good. Uh, you're missing out on the joke, all right? Now, I'm not talking about Room. I think there are two movies out there called Room, and I hear they're really good. This is not that. This is The Room from 2003. All right, and it stars a guy named Tommy Wizow, 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 something like that. Uh, and <laughs> this has been described as the Citizen Kane of bad movies. Now, why on earth would I recommend that you watch this film? Is it because it's good? No, no, it's not. It's not good at all. All right. So, if you're the casual viewer, casual listener of this program. Uh, you might be in for a laugh, all right? You might just want some entertainment. Go ahead and check out this movie. But for my primary audience, screenwriters, if you're a screenwriter, uh, you should watch this movie because <laughs> there's something really interesting about it because there are some bad movies out there where you can't tell what's exactly wrong with it, all right? So you may be throwing out the baby with the bathwater there. So... If you watch something like Power Rangers 2017, you might mistakenly think that everything in it is bad because it got bad reviews and it didn't make its money back, all right? But that's not true. Uh, you can go and watch it, and the acting is good, the dialogue is good, a lot of the cinematography is good. So, all right, there are some good things there, and then there are some downsides, you know, that... Uh, uh, they don't turn into Power Rangers until the last half hour. Oh, what a ripoff. All right, so <laughs> when we get to a movie like The Room, however, it's very unique because it does literally everything wrong. And that's great because uh, what, what this is is a springboard. So you can watch The Room, and no matter what the scenario is in your own screenplay, all you have to do is say, what did they do in the room and do the opposite, all right? <laughs> so uh, if, you, if you're wondering, it, it, this goes beyond screenwriting too. It could be acting, all right? So if you're wondering, okay, uh, what, what should I do with my performance? Just go back and watch the room and the, your answer is don't do that, all right? Do anything but that, all right? And it's the same with dialogue. It's the same with the plot. Uh, whatever you're working on currently, and you don't know what to do, go and watch The Room, and you'll know your answer. You'll say, not that. Don't do that, all right? That is that is your springboard. Just do the opposite of The Room, and you'll have a masterpiece, all right? Uh, the only exception, and this, is, this may be just me, but I actually, I really like the score. I like the score, uh, the background music in this movie. Um... It's actually, it's actually really good. If you were to drop that into the background of like Goodwill Hunting or uh, True Romance or something like that, I think it would work. I think it, people might just have a negative association with this film, you know, in that music. But I actually like it. I like the music. Uh, but essentially what this movie is, all right, and I don't know how else to put it because it fits a certain framework in my mind, and if I wanted to describe this to you in, in 30 seconds, it's, it's basically a softcore porno, all right? And it, it's got that structure, because it's, it's really weird that way. Like, I'm not sure if this is meant to be an actual film, um, but it, it's, it's got the exact same structure, as a softcore porno. Don't ask me how I know that. But it's it's a it's a bunch of talking, you know, no discernible plot really. Um, it's just a, a bunch of talking with really bad actors, really bad dialogue, that's chopped up by about uh, five different lovemaking scenes with some cheesy music in the background, and they're disproportionate to the time. In the film, that's that's why I, I compare this to a porno, is that the the lovemaking scenes will go on for several minutes each, 
so proportionally, that's not how normal movies work, all right? If you're watching a movie like The Terminator, you'll have, like, one of those scenes. If you're watching Titanic, you'll have one of those scenes. If you're watching Underworld, uh, what was the second one called? Underworld Evolution, you have one of those scenes, all right? This one has, I think, five of those scenes. And it's like, mm, you know, at a certain point, this isn't a movie anymore. Um, but, <laughs> and I would, I would describe it as being about equal in quality to a softcore porno, um, in that it doesn't really serve the function of porn, if you know what I mean. It's not, it doesn't work on that level. But, but, the bonus you get, the little golden nugget you get, is the star actor, uh, Tommy Wiseau, Wiseau, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a mind-numbingly bad movie, but every time he comes on screen, I have to smile, because he's so weird, he's such a weird dude, um, and I think this movie is like a masterpiece of self-indul- self-indulgence and ignorance, and just complete unself-awareness, you know, like, this is a guy who, who thinks that he's actually made a masterpiece here, and he's so out of touch with reality, and, and I, I had this feeling when I was watching it where I was like, okay, I get why he's so weird in this movie, but why does everyone else sound weird, and then I realized he also wrote their dialogue too, so they're just doing the best they can with what they have, but... He wrote, directed, and starred in this movie and did everything else, I guess. Um, so the other actors are reading dialogue that he wrote, so no wonder everybody else seems weird, too. Uh, but he's the star of the show, man. He's the one who really uh, steals the show. So <laughs> I think uh, he's got an interesting accent, too. I'm not sure where he's from, but the way he plays his character, the way this guy talks... Um, there was one reviewer who described it as, um, <laughs> he described it as Borat playing Christopher, no, Borat doing an impression of Christopher Walken playing a mental patient. And, and, they, and they're not wrong. They're not wrong. It's Borat doing an impression of Christopher Walken playing a mental patient. That's the basic voice that he's got and his, his general sense of behavior. Uh, <laughs> that's the kind of movie you're in for when you watch this movie. Um, so it's weird because I avoided this for the long, longest time and it, it changed my point of view on bad movies because I have always recommended watching the best movies and avoiding the bad ones, all right? I've always said uh, you want to study the best and kind of distance yourself from the worst. However, after watching this movie... I realized how pure the badness of it is and and making it, you know, if if true north is your objective, this must be true south. It's the exact opposite of the direction you want to go. So if you can use this movie for contrast, it'll guide all of your other decisions, all right? So I finally gave in. I heard all these jokes. I mean, there's a great video out there on on YouTube, uh Star Wars with Tommy Wiseau. Uh, go go check that that check that out. It's awesome. It, that's how I got introduced to it, and I kept hearing about the room. People keep talking about the room, and I finally saw it, uh, and I I fought it for a long time. I'm like, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Then I read the Wikipedia article on it, the production of it, the pl- summary of the movie, and all that stuff. And I'm like, if if you don't have time to watch the movie, just read the Wikipedia article. That'll make your day. It'll. <laughs> it'll brighten everything right up because it's just a hilarious article. It's, it's the only Wikipedia article out there that made me crack up laughing while I was reading it because uh, it's just so insane. Um, <laughs> uh, I remember uh, one of the things it said was this movie, it had a premiere and so many people demanded their money back that I think... Either the next night or the weekend after that, the movie theater that was showing it put up two signs in the window. One was no refunds, and the other was a review of the room saying, seeing this movie is like being stabbed in the head. (laughs) 
And it's not that bad. I mean, I actually found it really entertaining, but for all the wrong reasons. It's just, it's so god-awful. Um, but, <laughs> and it, it didn't really hit its high point for me until about a half an hour in. Like, at first, I'm like, all right, this is bad, but I've seen bad movies before. I mean, it's like, you know, any kind of TV original movie, you know, uh, whether it's, you know, a sci-fi original movie or anything like that, straight-to-video type stuff. There's a lot of, like, bad acting, bad writing type movies out there. But about, like, 35 minutes in, uh, we get to a scene where uh, this this kid that's always creepily hanging out with them, uh, he gets into, like, a fight with this drug dealer on the roof or something like that. Every scene happens on the roof. I don't know why it's always on the roof. Uh, but they're on the roof of this apartment building, and um, it's, like, this 15-year-old kid. I think he's 15. Uh, being held at gunpoint by a drug dealer, <laughs> and and um, I think Tommy comes up and takes out the drug dealer or something like that, and they're like confronting this kid. It's like, uh, what are you doing? Why are you doing drugs? And he says, I'm sorry. You know, I bought some drugs from I bought some drugs from him because I needed money. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> you bought drugs from him. Because you needed money. And the the old lady, you know, the, the, the girlfriend's mom in the movie, actually says the line, this is not the way you make money. And I'm like, I don't know if, if they really meant, like, drugs are bad, so you shouldn't make money that way. Or literally, that's not how economics works. Uh, <laughs> you don't buy drugs to make money. That doesn't make any sense unless you were planning to resell them. But then you're going to get shot anyway because you're on this turf. I don't know. It was weird. It was really weird. Um, and it's not like the rest of the movie makes sense. So I don't know why that jumped out at me. But the plot is not that hard to follow. Um, I thought that the plot was going to be all over the place. It's not as bad as people say. It's a pretty, it's a pretty simple through line. It's about uh, his girlfriend is having an affair. That's the entire plot. All right. He's, oh, fiance, fiance. They're engaged and... Um, his fiance is having an affair with his best friend. That's the entire plot, all right? And everything else just kind of shoots off of that. But, yeah, it's not as chaotic as I thought it was going to be, but it is bad. It's pretty goddamn awful. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, and then if you, if you don't want to subject yourself to the entire film, just watch the last five minutes, and you will see a masterpiece of melodrama. If you needed to look up an example of melodrama in the dictionary, just watch this clip from the end, the last five minutes of this movie. Oh, why is this happening to me? No. <laughs> it's terrible. It's awful. My God. Uh, so, what's, what's my final verdict on this movie? Um, okay, this is going to sound really weird uh, based on everything I just said, okay? It's... I grant you, it's not a good movie. I want to lead with that. It's not a good movie. But, but, I can't in good conscience give this a 1 out of 5. I can't even give it a 2 out of 5. I think I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. Not because it's good, but because I'm so entertained by how bad it is that I actually get enjoyment out of it. All right, so... What's a one-star movie for me? Green Lantern. I saw a Green Lantern once in the theaters, and I'm like, wow, don't need to go through that again. Uh, that's a one out of five, where I don't even get enjoyment out of it. What's a two out of five? I'm thinking like Batman and Robin. Like, again, Batman and Robin, it's bad. Like, it's really bad. But I still watch it for the entertainment value, where I'm like, this is freaking ridiculous, man. Like, I've seen Batman and Robin lots of times just to make fun of it. So... I give it a 2 out of 5 just for the entertainment value. But this is so pure in its badness that I think I have to give it a 3 out of 5. Not because it's actually okay, but because I'm conflicted. Like, as a critic, it's a 1 out of 5. Solid 1. As an audience member, it's freaking hilarious. So I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. I'm going to rate it as highly as I can rate a bad movie. 
just for the unintentional entertainment value alone. So, <laughs> your homework assignment, should you choose to accept it, is to uh, go watch The Room. I don't know if you can rent it. You can try to rent it. Try to buy it, I guess, if you want to. Um, I might actually end up buying this movie, though, because, um, <laughs> again, it sounds so weird, but it was something I thought I would only have to do once in my life, and then just to say that I did it. Now that I've seen it, it's such a strong anti-compass, you know, to point me in the wrong direction so that I know which way the right way is, that I think I need to see this movie once a year. I think I need to give myself a refresher. I think I need to watch this movie once every year to remind me what not to do. So pure of an example of what not to do, to keep me on the right track as a writer. And I think you can do the same thing for you. So you know what? You might want to consider buying this movie. You might want to rent it first, or find some other way to watch it for free first, if you can. But if you can't, I would recommend buying it. Not because it's good. Don't take this as a recommendation. This is the perfect tutorial on what not to do. As a writer, as an actor, as a filmmaker, director, producer, editor, don't do any of this. But it's got a pretty good score. All right? I'll give it that. It's got a good score. Just Google the theme from the room. I think they turned it into a video game. Like they actually made like a MIDI version of uh, that theme. So it's like an arcade game or something. Um, sounds hilarious. I would love to play the game. But yeah. The Room, 3 out of 5, purely for educational and unintentional entertainment value. Alright? <laughs> so, gosh, alright. I almost hope you haven't seen it yet, but if you have, uh, go ahead and uh, write down what you think in the comments section below. And, my God, you brave soul, if you, got, if you decide to go out and watch this movie... Come back and let me know what your experience was like. Was it helpful? Was it harmful? Did it traumatize you? Did it make you laugh? Did it make you cry? Did you actually think it was good? I don't know. Maybe. To each his own. This is Good Screenwriting, and I'm Trevor Meyer. See you next time.